Hey folks, Coach Alex here, and today I'm going to be answering one of my reader emails specifically related to a topic about power endurance, if you will, or anaerobic endurance. So if you don't know me, if this is sort of the first time um, listening to me or watching my content, then I'm a professional strength and conditioning coach. I've been doing that for about a decade. I'm also an assistant lecturer at the University of Hull, uh, a sort of tutor educator for British weightlifting. So my entire life has basically been in the gym, um, doing gym stuff, teaching people gym stuff. So that's what I do, right? We're going to jump into this, read an email, specifically ask him how they can get more endurance with like explosive movements. So if I cut to the, there's quite a long message and they've gone into their training background and lots of stuff that I've tried to keep these fairly anonymous, right? But if I cut to like a key extract, which is they feel, so let's see, coach, I feel I have a significant amount of power. I feel really like I can, I can generate a lot of power. I feel that I can move really, really quickly, which is really good. Okay. Here's, here's the catch. The problem that I have is that I get really exhausted really, really quickly. So I do two or three big efforts, but then I'm kind of on my ass for the next 30 minutes. Um, okay, so as a as an ex-Olympic, like uh, as a, no, say, when I say Olympic weightlifter, everyone thinks that I was at the Olympics. Definitely not the case. As an ex, very mediocre weightlifter, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like um, when I was just doing nothing but weightlifting, I would do like three heavy attempts or three powerful movements and I'd be like absolutely kind of done. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about this properly and give you some real solutions. Um, this is something that I come across with quite a lot of athletes. I tend to coach a lot of fighters, MMA guys. I've coached quite a lot of rugby athletes, a lot of power and strength athletes. So power endurance, right? Power is your ability to produce sub-maximal forces quickly Power endurance is your ability to repeatedly produce submaximal forces quickly. So a good differentiation here. Let's see if I do a, a medicine ball throw. If I grab a five kilogram medicine ball and I just throw it as hard as I can, chest pass style, over in that direction. That is a really good example of power, right? It's a power exercise. Uh, but let's say if I grab that ball, boom, throw it once, it bounces back to me. I throw it again, I throw it again, I throw it again, and I do that five, six, seven times. Now we're getting more into the realm of power endurance because I'm having to repeatedly produce that submaximal force very, very, very quickly. Now, it's a very specific type of training and like not everything else has a great, like some things will have carryover to this, but often not as much as you think. So having a good base of strength will have some carryover, but not as much as you think. Having a good base of power will have a good carryover, but not as much as you would think. The issue you have here is that a lot of the training that you do for strength and power is very low rep, is very low number of sets, and actually involves a lot of rest. So what you'll find is that if you do a lot of training that's purely like top end, you know, like explosive power work, sets of two, sets of three, with three minute rests or whatever, you'll find that your power endurance is actually not improving all that much because you're getting very, very used to those rests. So my solution, the simplest way you can do this is you actually have to train with far, well, like with more reps and with less rest. Um, so how would I structure a session? Well, if I give you an example of what I do for some of my grapplers, some of my mixed martial arts fighters, they need a lot of power endurance. If you think of like an MMA guy, they've got to jump in, deliver a series of quick aggressive strikes, then cut back out, defend a little bit, and then they're back in, and then they're back out. And they do that for multiple minutes, for multiple rounds, over the period of like 20 minutes, right? So they've, they've got a long period of time to do this repeatedly, so it's very important to them. What I have them doing, a really simple example, a really easy way to introduce this. Let's stick with the medicine ball example, right? Five kilogram, six kilogram medicine ball. I would get them doing sets of seven reps, so it's seven throws. Each throw is as aggressive as possible, really explosive, really aggressive, straight into the next throw. So it's boom, 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 seven throws. The entire thing probably takes like seven seconds tops, right? Maybe 10 seconds if they drop the ball or something. Um, and then all they're gonna do after that is they're gonna rest 30 seconds. They're not gonna rest a minute, not two minutes, not three minutes, 30 seconds, short rest, and then they're gonna repeat exactly the same thing. Seven really aggressive throws, and then they're gonna rest 30 seconds. I will get them doing that five to seven times um, in a row, so like five to seven sets of that with those really short rests, and that will constitute one round. I then might let them rest a little bit longer, maybe take a three to five minute rest. They could even then move on to a different exercise to train something slightly differently, or do a second round of that same exercise. So that is how I would develop that 
anaerobic endurance or that uh, like power endurance. Uh, that's how I go for the upper body. If you were using like a lower body example, you could do something like a squat jump is a perfect uh, is a perfect one for that. You could do something like bounds. So I really like like acute alternating zigzag bounds where you're like on a 45 degree angle, one leg bound, one leg bound, really cool plyometric exercise. You could do a set of six or eight reps of that, uh, literally rest 30 seconds, then do another set of six to eight reps. You could use exactly the same structure just with a lower body power exercise. So that is how over time you develop those sessions. You can add additional sets, additional reps. You can keep people doing that more and more and more. You can make the power exercise slightly more challenging by picking things that create, like add more load to the specific joints. So you've got a lot of different ways you can progress that. But fundamentally, that's how you're gonna train for power or anaerobic endurance, right? Um, give that some thought. If that's something that you think you need in your sport, I think implementing something like that can have a really, it can pay a quite quick dividends. You'll find even after a few weeks, you'll notice a real big difference with that. So uh, yeah, I hope that's helpful. If you found this useful, then you know, feel free to like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Uh, the important announcement stuff, right? If you have questions yourself, you can drop them down in the comments. Uh, you can also email me directly, alex at characterstrength.co.uk, and I will try and get back to you. It might not be immediately, right? It might not be like the next day, Give me a little bit of time. I have to prioritize. I'm doing my PhD research. I'm teaching at the university. I'm delivering courses. I'm coaching athletes one-to-one -one in strength and conditioning. So I have to prioritize all that stuff, but I will get back to you. So give me a little bit of time. Um, if it's interesting enough, if I think your question is kind of meaty and I think it's gonna benefit a lot of other people, then I'll try and record a video or a podcast or something just like this. Um, I'll make a long form article to go along with it with extra resources, um, like you know, pictures, demonstrations, tables, and I'll get all of that out and published. So if it is useful, I think it's gonna help a lot of people, that's something I'll do. Uh, beyond that, key announcements really are, if you're interested in coaching, in one-to-one -one coaching, then by all means, reach out. I'll try and leave a, a link or a description somewhere. You can also find me uh, www.characterstrength.co.uk. That's where you're gonna find me, find coaching options, all that good stuff. Um, if coaching is not something you're interested in, then I also do custom program writing where I can just hook you up with a specific strength and conditioning program to solve your needs as an athlete, to get you moving in the right direction, nice and cost effective and a bit more hands off. So you've got a bunch of options there. You've got programs, coaching, asking questions, basically everything you could need to get you progressing as an athlete. So uh, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, I will catch you in the next video. Okay, see you there.